Mr. Seaborn, you are about to lose your five-star status. Detective Conan The Miraculous Investigation is Image Epic's second game. This is Ryoi Mikage's first game as a project manager. This is one of two Image Epic games that are not RPGs and the first of seven licensed games. The Miraculous Investigation is the only mystery adventure game produced by Image Epic. As of this video, Detective Conan ranks number 4 on the list of best-selling manga. The anime adaption is one of the longest running. There are numerous spin-offs, films, audio CDs, live-action dramas, and of course, video games. The Miraculous Investigation is the only Detective Conan video game released outside of Japan. And of course, the one game that made it overseas was directed by Railway Mist Filtered Me Mikage. The Miraculous Investigation was released on May 17, 2007 in Japan. A PAL localization was released on May 1, 2009. The next mystery game on the Wii would be Another Code R which released in 2009. The Miraculous Investigation has Mikage's mindset written all over it. The Wii was barely a year old. It's featuring recognizable names. Marvelous Entertainment returns as a game's publisher. Even if Mikage wasn't fond of adventure games, being attached to a big name like Detective Conan guarantees sales. I couldn't find much information leading to this game's release, just a few articles sharing screenshots of this game. This is a point I want to bring up because things like interviews aren't normally brought up in game reviews, for good reason. But I think it's important to talk about these interviews even if it's a PR smokescreen of I'm passionate about this project and please look forward to it. You take away those interviews, you end up with half the story. So going into this review, I'm at a disadvantage. Not only am I missing how Mikage wound up directing this game, I'm also a newcomer to Detective Conan. Well, I'll do my part. The game is controlled exclusively on the Wiimote. Since there's no nunchuck, your first thought is to hold the Wiimote handlebar style. But in this style, if you hold the control pad up, Conan moves left. So you're holding the Wiimote remote control style and you're two-handing it. Movement feels off. You start running after a walking start. Thankfully, you'll always have the skateboard. It's faster, but now I have to show JDM product on top of being a fake Mei Tante Conan fan. I just want to get to 7th Dragon, is it that hard? If you hold down on the B button, you'll enter first person mode. I found no use for this except for when the game forced me into this perspective. The one button opens up the map. Remember, Image Epic started as a 3D graphics support studio. Game Boy Advance games have more detailed maps. It's probably a dedication to Miis, go figure. Characters move around often, but the map keeps track of them. You can only travel to the first floor of every building. You have elevators, but the extra walk pads out playtime poorly. The same character can give out multiple clues, so talk to them until they loop dialogue. Some clues require talking to characters in a specific order. There's no dialogue tree either. There's a relationship chart for important characters. Their bios get overwritten often, so it's not useful. Once you collect all the clues, Conan will tell you to use the clue chain. You can try to solve the case with missing clues, but the game won't save your progress, so it's better to wait. For every case, you'll have three boxes of clues to solve. The lower two boxes make up Conan's reasoning for the top box. Each clue is associated with a character that gave out the clue. You can replay the dialogue that came with the clue. It's hard to keep track of clues once you assign them to the clue chain, especially if one character gives out multiple clues. There are no red herring clues that clog your journal. It's just a matter of brute force. If you get stuck, you can use a Conan hint, but it'll lower your ranking. Your rank only affects getting extras, but you can easily buy all of the extras by playing minigames. The light gun game is pretty basic. There's only one enemy type. It's not sin and punishment. The Punch-Out clone has two enemies, Blimty Kaidatsu and a Pain Goblin. Take them down in the name of social justice. Whack-a-mole is whack-a-mole. That's it, it's just pounding furry animals. Futsal and curling are real sports, and they're unlocked at mid-game. Futsal is budget soccer, and your friends are budget cheerleaders. Curling is reliant on your teammates' AI. I didn't care for either sports game. Once you've played a minigame once, you've seen it all. Kirby minigames are more fun. Minigames give out points used to purchase Conan hints and extras. You can also unlock extras by doing well in the main game and getting high scores in minigames. The extra pictures are stills from the anime. The sound test lets you play all the music from the game, and they're all arrangements of songs from the anime. In the PAL version, you can change from the Japanese and English voice actors. The voice actors from the anime reprise their roles, and the new characters feature very good voice talent. In terms of localization, it's almost a direct translation, right up to the awkward sentences. The voice actors' lines sometimes didn't match the on-screen text. 
Looks like a copy of a newspaper or something. Yeah, I figured it out. But there was no point where I thought, okay, is the localizer fucking with me? That covers all the mechanics, so now we can talk about the story. So spoilers from here on out. The game starts off with the NTR voice audio. Kogoro gets invited to the Marapolis, a swanky new resort built in the middle of a lake. The kickoff party shows off investigation mode, and this is where you get introduced to the important characters. Moe the maid is... Oh, I get it, her name's a pun. Tadaki is the owner of the Marapolis. He compared himself to Rockefeller during an interview. There's no way this guy is up his own ass. Utako is Tadaki's wife. She was once an Olympic hopeful in gymnastics. Naoya is a comedian whose act is all about puns. He genuinely wants to kill Tadaki, no joke. Megumi is Tadaki's secretary. There are rumors that Megumi is Tadaki's lover, and I'm not saying that because how much hentai have a character named Megumi. Kyoichi is the leader of Mirage, an acrobatic team. Emily and Linda are sisters, and they're part of Mirage. Linda is always jealous that Emily steals guys Linda likes away from her. Next is Ogino, a guy with a sore throat. And finally, someone who'd rather not be here. Mystery Lady and Ogino have baggage, and it's not for the stay at Meropolis. Don't think about it, it's minigame time. Kogoro lost his handkerchief. Never mind that Genta admits having Kogoro's handkerchief, you gotta play Undertale. Pools open due to sharks and... Here we go. Tadaki recognizes Mystery Girl, but won't admit it. Tadaki then asks Kogoro to keep things quiet, as not to alert the guests. Mystery Girl is a bar hostess named Yuri. The pool is closed when Yuri died, so there are no witnesses. The strangulation marks suggest that the killer was right-handed. There's no sign of a struggle, so Yudi may have been drugged beforehand. There's a newspaper clipping planted inside Yudi's purse about an accident 12 years ago. There's our mystery, but the real mystery is why Bin Laden liked Detective Conan. Heiji's here, and then Conan gets bitch slapped by this boomer with a sore throat. Okino beats the children with his left hand, so he's not our murderer. Wait, what? Let's have a B-plot about a missing maid uniform with Moe. Yeah, that's a dumb B-plot. Yeah, that's better. We find out that Ogino was an ex-employee of Tadaki's, and that Ogino, Tadaki, and Yuri all know each other. The detective boys fuck around in an indoor maze. Have to be pretty cold to pull this off. Not pretty cold, Frank. Cold-blooded. Koichi, our Mirage coordinator, discovers that Ogino's throat spray was laced with cyanide. Don't worry, he's a med student. And before you scream, high school level literary device, that's not unusual. The gold medalist in women's foil at the 2020 Olympics was a med student. Being smart and being fit aren't mutually exclusive. That's another game. The real problem is how common cyanide poisoning is used in Detective Conan. Just like Yuri, Ogino has a note planted on him. If Tadaki doesn't confess to his crimes, more people will die. So it looks like revenge. Tadaki is forced to evacuate the Marapolis. The other real problem is how common revenge is a motive in Detective Conan. You know what, let's just have a blackout. We can't evacuate through the underground tunnel, since a blackout disabled the ventilation. We can leave by boat, but the murderer saw that coming and destroyed the lifeboats. That were in plain sight. Don't think about it. Why can't the Marapolis staff get the power back on? Kyoichi puts on a show for Wutaku. Kyoichi was in a car accident 12 years ago, which caused his amnesia. Wait, wasn't one of the accidents in Yuri's newspaper about a car accident 12 years ago? Anyway, new magic show. What the? Oh no! Ah! Oh, it can't be! It's Emily's body and... Oh! oh no! No! Emily! Wait, they didn't use a fishing line? Like, look at this setup. You'd think they'd go the extra mile and have a murder weapon to match the theme. Kogoro assumes Linda killed Emily, but Conan and Heiji find out that Linda was in a fishing accident and is terrified of water. She's scared of taking baths. Imagine Don't think this about way. it. Now Kogoro assumes Tadaki killed Ogino and Yuri. Back to the B plot. That maid uniform? It's back. Are those sleeping pills on Utako's table? Is that a laundry hamper? Open unattended luggage. Tadaki takes Ayumi hostage and attempts to flee the Marapolis. Twelve years ago, Tadaki got caught embezzling money by a rival businessman. Tadaki used Ogino and Yuri to get Tadaki's rival out of the picture, but Ogino went too far and killed Tadaki's rival and his wife. The kids survived, and one of the kids was Utako. See, I wasn't kidding when I said the NTR boys fucked someone so hard that Utako was a murderer all along. Utako met with Yuri, drugged and strangled her, and then transported her body to the pool. Utako then stole Moe's uniform and spiked Ogino's drink, and then poisoned him with cyanide. Utako drugged Linda and then dressed up as her so that way she could kill Emily. 
Let me just milk this one more time. I mentioned one of two kids. Turns out the other kid was Kyoichi. Utako! Neza! Remember kids, if you're covering up an embezzlement, remember to kill everyone. There's a new game plus, but there's nothing new. This won't be Image Epic's only Wii game, but the Miraculous Investigation was made with a lot less care than Luminous Arc. You can tell that Luminous Arc was made by amateur devs who did everything they could to make a good game. Luminous Arc was a slightly buggy but overall enjoyable game. If you take away the Detective Conan brand, you have a very basic mystery game. The clue chain is hard to navigate. If one character gives out multiple clues, there is no way to distinguish one clue from another once it's on the clue chain. The game encourages you to collect all of the clues and then use the clue chain. The game does not say progress if you're in the middle of a clue chain box. Either you get to the next step or you don't. Reviewing evidence is helpful, but it's just replayed dialogue in front of a black screen. Maybe it's supposed to be Cohen closing his eyes and focusing, but it looks empty. Being able to go into first person mode at will was pointless. I would have completely forgotten about investigation mode if the game didn't force it on me. The Miraculous Investigation feels like Image Epic's playground for figuring out the Wii. They're showing off the Wii's capabilities at the most basic level. Every death involves pointing with the Wii mote and then rotating an object, and let's not remember the control scheme. But if you take a step back, a kid's game is a good place to learn about new hardware. Game mechanics don't have to be complex, they just need to work. Gimmicks are a chance to learn everything about the system. The skateboard part in Act 4 was telegraphed well. You go down the same hallway without stakes in Act 3. Maybe this is just a warm-up for something bigger. It just happens to be a cash grab. It's still impressive that the Miraculous Investigation broke the international barrier for Detective Conan games. Even if the game wasn't that good, enough people believed that this game would sell overseas. Compared to Luminous Arc, this game is a disappointment. Luminous Arc has issues, but Image Epic tried their hardest to make the entire game enjoyable. The Miraculous Investigation just assumes that the Detective Conan brand is enough to forgive all the shortcomings, and it wasn't. That said, I don't recommend this game, even if you're a fan of Detective Conan. You'll have more fun playing Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people without context. Next time we'll review Image Epic's own Lunar the Silver Star. Wait, or is it Eve Burst Error?